I think crypto has a very bright future. I'll be bold enough to say in this vol very volatile market for crypto that within a decade, it'll be the 12th sector of the S&P. And the reason is there's just too much productivity, too much uh, transparency, really strong uh, vehicles for solving financial services problems that exist today, like transferring capital, as I talked about earlier. It's just too good and, and too efficient. And so it'll remain... The key is we need to get some policy where I think it'll happen first with stable coins. And, you know, you asked the question about the stock market. It's no different than the crypto market. The stock wow. market uh, is still a little expensive. If you believe we're having a recession, probably fairly valued. If, we th if you think we're having a soft landing, the trouble is nobody knows. So you're going to see this fibrillation going back and forth until we've resolved that question. And we know where the Fed stands in further rate hikes. But there are some great companies that have lost 20, 30, 40 percent of their value. And I have to admit, I'm nibbling in equities as well, just as I am in crypto. And so I can't call the bottom. But I don't use leverage. <laughs> mm, that's, the, that's the secret sauce. Everybody's calling me up, want to lend me money. And I just say, no, no, Nanette, not interested. <laughs>
store my crypto assets that fit into my compliance and accounting departments. And so, you know, when, when Wonderfy was able to offer me a centralized wallet at it, it, BitBuy, I was able to say to my auditors, look, you can audit this thing daily, weekly, quarterly, monthly, and I can mark to market each position for you at four o'clock, even though it's irrelevant in crypto land, it trades 24 seven. But the old infrastructure of compliance that exists for all financial markets has not yet provided systems yet for anybody that wants to be compliant like I have to be. I don't have an option. I have to go through audit. I'm an investor in many other financial services companies that are issuers under regulations in many countries. We have to have our audit statements signed. Don't fight the Fed is a common expression investors use to explain one of the most influential forces on global financial markets. After multiple years of easy money policies and near zero interest rates, the U.S. Federal Reserve approved an interest rate hike of 0.25%, the first rate hike in more than three years. Since then, the Fed has implemented two additional rate hikes of 0.5% and 0.75%, bringing the current benchmark interest rate to a range of 1.5% to 1.75%. During the same period of time, risk assets around the world have been falling in price, with Bitcoin declining from 48000 at the end of March to its current price, which is trading near support at 20000 The historic rise in cryptocurrency and legacy markets that was witnessed in 2021 was largely driven by the easy money policies of the Fed. And it's highly likely that a return to such policies would once again see funds flow into the crypto ecosystem. It's taken me a long time to convince my existing compliance and accounting infrastructure that supports my operating company's investments across a wide range of financial services to get on board with my positions in crypto. Because remember, I, I own... I own Wonderfy because I want to own infrastructure equity. Same for FTX, same for Circle. I'm a shareholder of those companies and immutable holdings in the NFT space. That's my basket of equities that are all compliant operations. They're all compliant. They all work under a very strict compliance. That's the test that starts the equity investment. But the more interesting challenge that I solved recently um, with, with Wonderfy again, with BitBuy, was to actually open an account, transfer all of my projects, whether it was a Polygon or a Helium or whatever. I mean, all this stuff to me, these, these are not coins. It's just software. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And moved it into, and slowly I'm doing this, I'm not finished yet, into BitBuy where I can get a statement each month that my auditor gets before I do and my compliance department marks to market every day at four o'clock. And mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I find it so humorous that the whole compliance world still marks to market crypto at 4.01 PM as if that means anything because <laughs> it's, it's trading 24 seven, but they mark to market it because they have this giant infrastructure that reports back up. Is there over leveraged positions? Is the position more than 5% depending on the mandate that it's held in. But this is what Wonderfy is doing. It's working under the regulator, under an order, completely compliant, actually has a public auditor looking at it now, signing my statements. That's a big deal. That did not happen for years. And that's why I'd rather invest there because that's going to become more and more and more important as regulation comes. The large institutions that don't own any crypto need the wonderfies of the world, totally compliant, whether it's decentralized or centralized, and auditors that can actually use the infrastructure they're building to make sure they can mark to market according to the traditional right. rules of compliance. Another event that has been rumored for years that could spark a crypto revival in the passage of a spot of Bitcoin for United States markets. Ever since 2017, when the first BTC ETF proposed by the Winklevoss twins was denied by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, there has been one rejection after another for any physically backed Bitcoin ETF proposal put forward. Reasons for the rejection typically revolve around the charge that cryptocurrency markets are easily manipulated and the proper safeguards are not in place to protect investors. If a spot ETF were to be approved, it would render this long-running objection moot and bring a new level of legitimacy to Bitcoin and the crypto asset class as a whole. This has the potential to usher in a new wave of institutional adoption that could bring about the end of crypto winter as new funds flow into the market. I'm still a huge fan of NFTs for authentication, not for trading. I have never, ever traded one 
until the, the regulator tells me if it's a commodity or a, uh, or a security, because I don't want to get caught in that debate. But I have used them. Last week, um, there, was a, there was an art exhibit on in New York, and I bought a piece, and I asked the uh, dealer and the artist, I will not take delivery without an authentication NFT. And, I, uh, and, they, and they said, well, wait a second. We don't have one. I said, then you don't have a sale. I want that so I can send it to my insurance company. That's the way things are moving. I'm not trading that NFT. It's attached physically, if you want to think of it that way, to the piece of art I bought. It will trade when the physical art trades. But now I'm able to actually send the NFT to my insurance company and say, this is what I bought. This is when I bought it. Here are the attributes of it. Here's its physical location. It's on transportation now down to Florida, to my home. And all of that is covered in this mm -hmm. NFT. So that's the future of NFTs for me. You know, if you, I don't know about an ape or any of that stuff, because, sure. you know, to me, where's the intrinsic value there? Um, somebody tried to sell me an ape for $362,000. It's now worth sixty. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Having an unofficial lender of last resorts like Sam Bankman Fried to bail out some of the embattled crypto lenders is also providing relief to investors. Trackle Hoon added. This week, FTX CEO said he and his company still have a few billion on hand to shore up struggling firms that could further destabilize the digital asset industry. Well, I have to disclose I'm a shareholder. Um, ben, you should be aware as a shareholder in Wonderfy as well. He came in around the same time I did. Um, I am a paid spokesperson for FTX, so I have a lot of respect for the management there. I did a lot of due diligence before I accepted that position because I wanted to have a compliant home. But Sam is one of the smarter guys in this space for this reason. Long before crypto, he was a trader. He understands the power of leverage, both to the dark side and the upside of performance. So I'm going to guess, and it's a personal opinion, the last guy to blow up is going to be Sam Bankman Freed because he doesn't get himself caught in over levered positions. Now, they've been, they're very, very good in terms of managing their own business. He's got a huge team there, Ryan, the CEO. They also manage the Americas differently. They do the rest of the world. They're compliance. His parents are compliance lawyers at Sanford. I mean, he doesn't have a better heritage in terms of managing this process. So I, I think he's probably going to be one of the ones that picks up the pieces and has been doing that in recent purchases that are made public in various platforms that are just getting crushed. It's a long-term strategic move. I think it's smart. So what are your thoughts about the Bitcoin's best week since October as crypto collapse stabilizes? Tell us down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video and thanks so much for watching.